Hey guys, it's Kyle with the How To Guy123 here, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be reviewing the video editing software Cyberlink PowerDirector 17. I want to thank Cyberlink for giving me a copy for my review. If you guys would like to learn more about PowerDirector 17, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can find out more information. In this review, I'll let you guys know my thoughts and opinions on the software itself, as well as if I would recommend it for someone looking to edit their YouTube videos. So let's go ahead and jump right into the review. So the first thing I want to look at is the price. PowerDirector 17 Ultra comes in at $99.99. I think this is a good price for an entry level editing software and is affordable for someone looking to start making YouTube videos. It's also not as expensive as other popular video editing softwares that a lot of other YouTubers use like Sony Vegas Pro 16 which comes in at a whopping $600 and Adobe Premiere Pro which costs $19.99 a month but over time that can definitely add up. I also feel like the price is justifiable considering the amount of features you get which we'll cover throughout this review. Next, I quickly want to look at the recommended computer specs for PowerDirector 17. The minimum system requirements are a 64-bit copy of Windows 7, 8, 8.1, or 10. For the processor, you're going to need an Intel i-series or AMD Phenom 2, 2GB of RAM, and a graphics card that has at least 128MB of VRAM. So if you're not too tech savvy, these basically mean that PowerDirector will pretty much run on any computer. You do not need a high-end editing computer to run this software. However, if you are going to be editing in 4K or working with 360 video, you might need a more powerful computer. Also, there is no Mac version, so if you are a Mac user, you are out of luck. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the software itself. When you first open the software, you'll be presented with this window. At the top, it gives you three options to set the video aspect ratio. 16x9, 4x3, and 9x16. 16x9 is what most video is recorded in and is the one you're most likely going to choose. 4x3 is what older standard definition cameras record in. And 9x16 is for when you're recording a video with your phone and you're holding it in portrait mode. Just a reminder that if you're recording video with your phone, always hold it horizontally so when you upload the video to YouTube, you won't have the large black bars on the side. Continuing on, you'll also have three editing modes to choose from. Timeline mode, storyboard mode, and slideshow creator. Timeline mode is the mode you're most likely going to be using the most. It's where all of your editing will be done. You'll be editing with the timeline and all of PowerDirector's features will be available to you. Next is storyboard mode. This is like a stripped down version of timeline mode, but rather than having a timeline, only the video thumbnails are shown. Also, you'll not have access to all of PowerDirector's features and only the basic editing tools are available. Storyboard mode is more geared towards beginners. Finally, there is slideshow mode, which in my opinion is not super useful, and it's just there to make a slideshow of pictures with added background music. Let's go ahead and choose timeline mode. Once PowerDirector is open, you'll be in the editing software itself. At the top, you'll see four tabs, capture, edit, produce, and create disc. The edit tab is where all the editing is done. You'll have your preview window, timeline, media room, and effects. Capture is really cool because it allows you to record video without leaving the editing software. This is a really nice feature to have. You can record from any external capture device that is connected to your computer, like a webcam. You can also record voiceover. It even comes with a built-in screen recorder, which is good for people like me who record most of their videos from their computer screen. Finally, the Produce tab is used to export your video when you're done editing. Now let's go ahead and import some video. To do so, go to the media room and click on the folder icon with the down arrow. Then click on import media files. Then choose your footage you would like to import. During my test, I noticed that PowerDirector supported all major video formats including AVC H.264 and HVEC H.265. The only format that seemed to not be supported was AVI, so if you record your footage in AVI, you're going to need to convert it before using it in PowerDirector. Before you import your clip, you could preview it in the preview window by having it highlighted in the media room and then clicking the play button on the preview window. You can also trim your footage before you add your video to the timeline by right clicking on the video and choosing pre-cut. Now let's go ahead and drag the footage onto the timeline. The footage that I'm using here was recorded in 4K. And if I play it back in the preview window, you can see that the playback is pretty smooth. I noticed that the performance of PowerDirector seems to be pretty solid as I'm able to play back this 4K footage in full HD. I'm also able to scrub along the timeline smoothly and the preview window seems to be able to catch up. 
Next, if we take a look at the sidebar beside the media room, you'll see 9 tabs. The first one is the effects tab where you can apply a wider range of visual effects to your video. Next is the video overlays tab which contains some text bubbles and overlays that you can add to your video. After that we have the particles tab which contains two particle overlays that you can add on top of your video. Furthermore we have the text tab where you can add just the default text to your video. It also comes with several pre-made animated text effects for you to use as well. Next we have the transitions tab. PowerDirector also lets you download more text animations, particles, transitions, and video overlays online on their website for free. Now we have the audio mixer tab to easily adjust the audio of all of our tracks. Finally, we have the voiceover tab which is another place in PowerDirector where you can record your voice over audio. Now let's go ahead and click on our clip in the timeline. Under the media room, you'll see tools that you can use to edit your video. For example, the split tool, trim tool, and designer which will allow you to create masks and adjust picture and picture settings. Next you have Fix and Enhance, which will allow you to adjust the way that your video looks by adding things like color correction, stabilization, lighting, HDR, etc. Beside Fix and Enhance, there is a Tools tab which includes things like motion tracking, crop and zoom, fast and slow motion, etc. Here you will also find the Audio Editor which has a wider range of tools to allow you to edit your audio. Finally, there is a keyframe tab which allows you to keyframe options from the fix and enhance tab as well as the on-screen position of your video as well as the audio volume. So real quick, I just want to go over some of my favorite features of PowerDirector as well as some new features that were added in PowerDirector 17. The first feature I want to highlight is motion tracking. This is a great feature that even a lot of higher end editing softwares like Vegas 16 don't even have. Motion tracking allows you to automatically track a person or object that is moving on screen and have an image, text, or effect follow the tracker. So for example, PowerDirector comes with a bunch of stock footage here and I'm just going to borrow the skateboarder clip here and I'm going to drag it down into the timeline. I'm just going to turn down the volume a bit because it's a little bit loud. Now with our clip highlighted, go over to the tools tab and then click on Motion Tracker. This window is going to pop up and you'll see this little box here. You're going to want to adjust the size of the box and drag it over the person or item you want to track. So in this case, I'll track the back of the skateboard here and I'm just going to adjust the box and position it over the back of the skateboard. So that looks about good and when you're done adjusting your tracker, go ahead and click on the track button and PowerDirector is going to try its best to adjust or to track the back of the skateboard there. And I think it does a pretty good job. It does get a little bit lost there, but that's not too big of a deal. We can actually adjust it. So let's find where it gets lost. It gets lost because there's quite a bit going on in the clip at this point. But it seems like it gets lost about here. So we're just going to go over and adjust the box a little bit. Then click on track one frame only. And you're going to want to track a couple frames manually. So it gets a little bit lost there. And I think it's good. A little bit more. So it looks about good. So after you've tracked a couple frames manually, you can continue tracking. And it so it gets a little bit lost. So it'll have to go back a little bit more. And there we go. So now if we play back our tracking, you can see that Power Director has tracked our skateboard pretty well. Okay, so now once our motion tracking is done, we can now either add some text, an image, or an effect over our tracking. So if we come to the beginning here, we'll add some text. So we'll just click the text icon there and we'll add some text. So now we can adjust the size of our text and position it to where we want it to be uh, attached to the tracker. So that looks about good. And you can adjust the settings to your liking, but we'll leave it like this for now. The only thing I'm going to check is adjust the effect size with the track object. So as the camera moves, the text size is going to be adjusted. So let's go ahead and play our clip back. And you can see that the text is now being tracked to the skateboard. So 
So that's pretty cool. And when you're done, just go ahead and click on OK. You can also attach an image or even an effect to the tracker. An example of an effect is a blur effect. The motion tracker makes it really easy to blur out people's faces while they're moving around. The next feature I'd like to highlight is PowerDirector's multicolor chroma key. This is a really cool idea because it allows you to chroma key out up to three colors at a time. So for example, I have this image here that I created in Photoshop where we have two colors a green background and a blue background. Now in most cases this wouldn't work if you wanted to chroma key out the background because only half of the image would be chroma keyed out and you'd have this remaining uh, part. So if you were to stick like a background here, only half of the background would be cut out and you'd have the other half just normal. So for example if I throw this into the timeline, we're going to want to stick this on the second track and we'll stick the background above it on this track here. And if we highlight our image here, and go to designer then PIP designer which stands for picture in picture designer and we highlight uh, let me just close this real quick we highlight a chroma key and we open up the drop down we now take the eyedropper and highlight it over the green part of the background you can see that the green part is chroma keyed out and this is in most other editing software how far you would get but in PowerDirector since we can have multicolor chroma key we can just click add a new key here Take the eyedropper tool again and highlight it over the blue part and now you can see that the entire background is now chroma keyed out which i think is really cool so the third feature i want to take a look at is 360 nvr video this isn't something i've really taken a look at too much but i know it's a new thing that a lot of creators have been getting into so it's really nice that power director is kind of ahead of the game here so uh let's take a look at it power director comes with uh, some test stock footage here that i'm going to be using and if we go ahead and drag it into the timeline here, it's going to ask us to switch to a 360 workspace. So we'll just click on the create a 360 video project here. And that's going to bring us into the 360 workspace. And by default, 360 video is turned off. So you're going to want to click the 360 button here. And that's going to change our preview window to the 360 mode. And if we can use the mouse here to look around as well as the little arrow keys here. And also if we go ahead and play our footage, while the video is playing, we can take a look around. So it's really cool. And you can pretty much, you know, just go ahead and edit your 360 video like this. Like I mentioned, not something I've really taken a look at, but it's uh, kind of cool to play around with. So the final feature I'm going to show off in PowerDirector is the multi-camera designer. So if you're recording a video and you're using multiple cameras with multiple camera angles, it's very easy to switch between them in editing. So here I recorded a video with two camera angles and if we come up here to the puzzle piece and then choose multi-cam designer and then we choose import video and import from media room and we select our two clips and click OK. It just imported them into the timeline here and I'm just going to shorten them real quick. Okay, so I just went ahead and shorted my clips, make sure that they're the same length and you'll see here we have our camera one and our camera too. So you're going to want to first select an audio source. So whatever microphone you want to use for your video. In this case, I'm going to be using camera ones because that's recording with my main microphone from my webcam, which is the blue snowball. And then you're going to want to do an audio analysis. And this is just going to sync up the two clips based off the audio. So it's just going to match the audio of the two clips. And then you're going to want to choose single video. Now you'll see this record button here. And you're going to want to play the video and just switch between it's clicking on the numbers for, for what camera is showing. The camera feature. So this is going to be camera one, this is going to be camera two, camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. So while it was recording, I just clicked on the number for whatever camera I wanted to be showing. So let's play that back. This is going to be a test for PowerDirector's multi-camera feature. So this is going to be camera one, this is going to be camera two, camera one. Camera two, camera one, camera two. And we can always go ahead in the timeline here, you can see it shows camera one, two, so you can just adjust it afterwards. Okay, that should be okay. And then when you're done, just hit okay. And it's going to import the video onto our timeline here. So PowerDirector makes it very easy to edit with multiple camera angles. So in conclusion, PowerDirector 17 is a great video editing software for editing your YouTube videos. It comes in at a low cost. 
is very easy to use and learn. It can run on any computer and also has plenty of features for whatever type of YouTube video you want to make. So that brings us to the end of the review. I hope this helped in your decision on choosing a video editing software. If you'd like to find out more about PowerDirector 17, you can visit the link in the description below for more information. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.